Welcome from me, astrologer Patrick Arundel. Today, in the latest of my Heads Up series, I'm going to take a look at Venus's application to Saturn, which begins in earnest from around about the 19th, peaks on the 21st of March, but goes on to the 23rd. Now, these two haven't come together in an exact alliance in this sign for 30 years. If you're a little bit older and you've got a good memory, the last time they came together was Valentine's Day in 1994. Was it a cheerful date for you? Let me know if so. But seriously, for all of us, what does this mean? Well, if we think about the bigger cycles of life, Saturn moved into Aries in 1996. So we're coming to the end of Saturn's entire circuit through the sky. When it moves initially in 2025 in May for its first blush into Aries, that's a new beginning. Now Venus, of course, is exalted in the sign of Pisces, likes being here. And in fact, by the 3rd of April, it's going to forge a quite beautiful link to Neptune, the ruler of the sign of Pisces. But this is a particular aspect which can have some challenges. It does have some opportunities. So I just want to go through this with you. I'm going to share the event chart that we can all relate to collectively. And then I'm going to give you just a brief overview of what you can expect for each of the 12 signs from Aries through to Pisces, which you can relate to in terms of your ascendant, your personality, your sun in terms of your soul, or the moon in terms of your home and emotional life. If you're new to my channel, it's great to have your company. If you have any thoughts, please share them. I try to interact with each comment. It's very much a community, this. If you're a returning visitor, thank you so much for joining me once more. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honored if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. So on the screen now, you can see the event chart. Now I visualize this at naught degrees Aries for the Ascendant, and that pictures Saturn Saturn and Venus 12 degrees and 26 in the 12th house. So this is true for all of us to relate to. So let's just think about Saturn and Venus in the 12th house. The 12th house is very much about the more psychological dimension. It can be in terms of traditional astrology where there are people who don't have our best interest at heart, the so-called secret enemies. But the 12th house can also be where we can learn an awful lot about how we respond to situations in a way that we're not necessarily completely conscious of. Now Saturn creates structures and Venus applying to Saturn can create a cooling of the ardour of Venus. Now that comes because Venus rules two zodiac signs, the sign of Taurus, which is very much about um, more sensual energies, it's our self-worth, it's our values, but also it's our everyday money. It also influences good food, good wine, agriculture. Now Venus also rules the sign of Libra, which is very much about relating and partnership, finding harmony, finding those points that we can celebrate that we have in common. But also the sign of Libra can be to do with more superficial interactions, so I feel that what's going to happen this week is that if there are some players in our world and they don't have to be romantic ones, which who aren't necessarily in for the long haul, those so-called fair weather friends could be revealed by the cooler vibe of Saturn. But also it may be a time that we feel that we're not quite as alluring as we would like. So some of our psychological fears about our appearance, very much ruled by Libra, could come. But I also want to make you aware of the midpoint that is in Gemini. So that's the balance of the chart between the moon in Leo at 2546, the sun that's just into the sign of Aries, 1 degree and 49. We take the point between them, we get the soul and passion energy of the sun and the more receptive feeling energy of the moon. It's the yin and yang point of the chart and it's squaring up to Saturn and Venus. So if we take that midpoint as being the first house cusp, it means that Saturn and Venus are in the 10th house. So where we may feel the squeeze is more and more expectation in the professional sphere. 
we could experience someone who uses charm but actually they're not really interested in so much the relationship it's more extracting some value from the relationship so if we do experience a professional situation where it seems that someone's been quite superficial in order to get what they want just be mindful of what their true motives are because if it feels like that it probably is like that but then of course in the world of work people do seem to want more and more and that is causing the potential for resentment so the 12th house energy of pisces is very sensitive if you are in a professional situation or a relationship a friendship that you're not really enjoying it you feel the vibe isn't very good but there is a fear of leaving the situation saturn then that energy can also manifest itself in a very powerful way so basically boiling this all down is that venus in pisces obviously is blessed it's in the second decan of the sign of pisces which means this is a very lunar energy because that second decan is sub by the moon so if there is a lack of emotional warmth in any situation and it seems that it's quite limited or someone tends to be a little bit too authoritative wants to play the parents in the relationship all these things may be the red flags that this isn't going to be a tie that endures but if you're prepared to really work at it and you want you to make your way all the way up the ladder of corporate success this aspect may remind you that at times you have to play the game it just depends on how you are leading your life personally but if you're wanting a more idealistic existence this could be a time that you want to break free now please stay with me as i go through each of the 12 signs from Mary Sue to Pisces to give you a little flavour of what you can expect this week from this aspect. So Aries, one of the things that I feel that we all want to feel in life is a sense of loyalty, that we can trust people. And if there has been a bit of a fear that someone isn't as committed to you as you would like, and perhaps this is a fear that's been building up over the last year with Saturn's transition through your 12th house, this could be a crunch point in a relationship which hasn't quite worked for you. But the good thing about this aspect is if there are times that you do feel quite reflective, quite nostalgic about someone from your past, I think this is just a reminder of the downside of that involvement. And if you had been becoming a little bit more connected to perhaps the principle of meeting up and rekindling this connection, just proceed with a degree of care. So I'm not saying it couldn't work. What I'm saying is you have to be utterly realistic because Saturn over the last year has taught you a huge amount, but also remember what Neptune has taught you since 2012 and feeling that you're really honored and celebrated and respected in any relationship is absolutely crucial for you at this time. Taurus, your ruler Venus applied to Saturn is another stark reminder, unfortunately, that some of your friendships, particularly over the last 12 months, have changed. Maybe there are some players who've become much more invested in you and much more part of your everyday structure, and that's great. And those are the people, those solid citizens, that you can really celebrate at this time. But if you are in a relationship, a long-term relationship, where you and your partner don't seem to be able to celebrate mutual things or you don't feel that there really is a long-term future for it you may start to think more seriously whether this is blocking you up and preventing you from meeting the person who really would let you trip the light fantastic so i feel that one of the things you need to do with this influence is think very seriously about who's in your friendship group in a relationship sense who is really committed are you committed to someone? Do you feel you're in for the long term? If you feel someone is not actually your friend, even if you really fancy them, do you have enough in common to really make this uh, be a lasting alliance? Those are the big questions you need to ask. So Gemini, with Venus applying to Saturn in your 10th house, charm will get you everywhere, or will it? You may encounter someone this week that even if you try to be utterly diplomatic, lean into their needs, 
understand where they're coming from, it may be like a stony silence. So if you also work in an environment where there really isn't much encouragement, acknowledgement, appreciation, the goal setting that you're giving is all about the goal. So it's all about essentially uh, driving you on rather than actually appreciating you. That could give you uh, food for thought because at the end of the day, Venus combining with Saturn, uh, along with Neptune, could be giving you the desire to raise your profile and be more successful. If you do work in a public facing role, you know, such as sales, marketing, uh, front of house, uh, hospitality, you could feel that the job seems a bit of a, a weight on your shoulder at the moment. But that doesn't mean to say you shouldn't continue to chip away and work hard at it. But just be aware with the midpoint being in your side. If you're feeling, if you're feeling you're having to dilute your individual needs in order to fit in with what's expected, then maybe that's another conversation that you need to have perhaps with someone that you really trust and respect. And you could get some really excellent advice at this time. Equally, this could be a moment when a relationship that's been important to you can take that next step of commitment. You know, whether it's moving in together, uh, renting or buying a property, or for some people even making the decision to get spliced because Venus applying to Saturn in the 10th house is where you're taking it really seriously. So Cancer, Venus applying to Saturn suggests that if you feel there's a lack of truthfulness and honorability or even a narrow mindedness in an existing relationship, that could make you feel a bit miserable. If you don't see yourself breaking away and having a vacation this year, perhaps because your financial situation is quite uh, tricky, that also can seem a bit limiting. What you can do though is show an appreciation of new knowledge and information and you could uh, connect to someone who actually can turn out to be a hugely influential figure. Now this could be someone that you watch on YouTube that really captures your imagination, a very motivational character that you feel really uh, tunes into your senses but at the same time you can respect where they're coming from. But I feel if there is that uh, involvement that you have where someone seems a little bit elusive, you don't really quite know where you stand, I think you could be pushing for clarity over the next few days. So Leo, Venus applying to Saturn in your eighth house is really, really important when it comes to business matters. In fact, this could actually be an up time where some kind of reward or dividend comes back to you for a lot of period of hard work and application. But you do need the people that you're connected to, whether it's a one-to-one -one business partner, or you work in a company, or you work with your romantic partner very carefully on resources, you need to feel respected about your input. If you are respected, really appreciated, this could be a really great time. What could be more challenging? Well, if there isn't a great amount of intimacy. So if you're wanting uh, a more steamy, sensual relationship and your partner is perfectly happy uh, reading a book and getting that light off early, then that could be quite unsatisfactory to you. So if there is limitations around shared finances or intimacy, that's what Saturn can flag up. But this could also be a time that you could put in motion something to do with uh, an entrepreneurial idea where you can work well with someone, but I feel the terms of reference need to be very, um, very clear between you and yours before you make the final investment or commitment. So Virgo, since 2012, those supremely wonderful moments you've experienced, but perhaps crushing moments of disappointment with Neptune in your 12th, Saturn since last year has made you much more conscious of setting your boundaries, not necessarily always being so much of a people pleaser, making it clear that in the contract you have to get as well as give because you can be a big giver. But Venus in the, the seventh house undoubtedly is one of its finest positions because this evokes its energy of Libra. So Maybe this is a point when you're inching towards really realizing that, wow, someone is really important and they're as seriously interested in me as I am in them. 
Unfortunately, completely the converse can be true. An ice cold wind could go through an existing relationship if you do feel there's just a lack of nurture that goes between you. Perhaps you feel that a person doesn't fulfill your expectations and maybe they irritate you a little bit and you could feel a bit critical with this aspect. But then again, it could be coming from them. What Venus tries to achieve in the seventh house is the equilibrium between the give and take. Now Saturn is a bit more of a one-eyed monster. It's much more about what you want from the situation. But do be conscious about how you seem to the other person. Even if it's not how you feel you're being, they could perceive you as being very cool. And sometimes in life, we have to give in order to get. And if we freeze things down to the degree that everyone gets very inhibited, the flow completely collapses. So if things have got a bit tense, maybe it's the time to let go of some of the minor irritations that aren't going so well and celebrate the things you do have in common. So Libra, Venus of course is your glorious ruler. But I have been saying to you for some while, if you've been too sacrificing, too thoughtful, assisting people around practicalities to such a degree that actually it's losing its sparkle for you and yours, then that's something you need to be mindful of, that we can't pour from that proverbial empty jug. So part of the reason for this is that because Neptune has been in your sixth house a long time, since 2012, Saturn's just come along over the last year and brought a more business-like dimension to the idealism that you've been given quite uh, openly over that period of time. So this is a big moment because Saturn uh, being approached by your ruler Venus is really helping you to think about how the dimension goes, particularly around the domestic situation or if you work with someone, if you have a colleague that's rather demanding, however much you try to be pleasant, you're always met with a cold shoulder. That kind of stuff could really needle you this week because now the sun is in your seventh house in the sign of Aries, along with the North Node, Chiron, and also Mercury, you're only too conscious of what you give to situations, but I think you're much more aware of what you want back. And if it does seem that it's more of a case than give than get, something has to give. So things can be a little bit brittle, even in a good relationship, if there's not com good communication backwards and forwards. And that's where you really prosper, where there can be a little bit of a debate, but most of all, acknowledgement. So if someone's saying, look, you're really good around this, I really appreciate it, it warms your heart. If you don't hear those messages and you feel they just expect it of you, it can make you resentful. Remember, you're a cardinal sign. And with the sun just entered the first cardinal quadrant of the year, that's pushing you over the next 13 weeks to be much more assertive about your boundaries. So it's good to be good. It's good to be thoughtful. It's good to do things in an efficient way, Saturn in the sixth house, but not if you're doing a job, for example, that totally pulverizes your passion. So if it's a job that you can do standing on your proverbial head, but actually it's all a bit automatic. You're not feeling a sense of joy. You need to feel joy at this time. And that collection of energy in Aries is pushing you to be more self-confident about asking for, asking for what you want and not just be always the person who's so quick to see and respond to other people's needs too. Scorpio, Venus being in your fifth house is absolutely fantastic. It's romantic, it's glamorous, it's brilliant for strutting our stuff for perhaps giving yourself some kind of makeover. But the fifth house is about romance, but it is about children, but it's also about self-expression. Your self-expression could chill down a little bit over the next few days if it doesn't feel that it's so much of a give and take situation. So as much as you have uh, still the beautiful Neptune in your fifth house and Venus and Neptune come together, in a superb way on the 3rd of April. This is a bit of a test. You know, if you feel that uh, with all the gathering of energy in the sign of Aries, that things are a bit too work a day, it is about going to your job, coming back, the domestic sphere, 
the needs of children, so forth and so on, if things have become very stilted when it comes to spontaneity, for example, this is a good time to push back on that, especially if you are someone who's quite adhered to patterns and being a fixed sign, Scorpios often can. Of course, the interesting thing for you is that Uranus and Jupiter are actually in your seventh house and they can bring some big revelations over the next month in terms of your relationships or big shifts. But you've got to be open to the process and it may be to get what you really need about a relationship you may have to change some of your more personal, more, uh, more formulated way of dealing with things. So be a bit more fluid. And of course, the sign of Pisces is mutable. That's flexing, but Saturn is very resistant. So this is time to take your romantic and social needs seriously. But I think you should be wanting the person you're attracted to or the person you're involved with to take it seriously as well and you're wanting them to work as hard as you're working but if you're tuned out and feeling dissatisfied this is the time to give yourself a little bit of a nudge to think look what could i do to make this more dynamic interesting and off the cuff sagittarius venus applying to saturn is in your fourth house what you want is the feeling but you've got such a brilliant gathering in house five which is very dazzling, charismatic and personality led, but you still need it to feel right. What you've been learning since 212, since 223, is with Neptune then Saturn in your fourth house, that your previous approach to situations, which was very free spirited, has kind of lost a little bit of its appeal. You're becoming much more conscious of having a home and an emotional life which really feeds and nurtures you in a positive way. But having said that, if you're with someone just for the security, that's not really you, is it? You're wanting to be idealistic. You want it to be switched on and stimulated. So if things have become a little bit too focused on the home and emotional and family side of things, a good time to think about how you can rearrange your time, perhaps get some babysitting help if you've got children and get out and have some fun. But Venus applying to Saturn could be a brilliant opportunity to redecorate, do some changes around where you live, perhaps even put in process uh, an application to buy or rent a property. Capricorn, Venus applying to Saturn in your third house is interesting. Saturn has been cooling down your everyday interactions for a year. Before that, Neptune was in this area and there may have been times when you felt a little bit confused about some of your beliefs and ideas or a bit suspicious or unsure of people that you've lived around or lived near. Maybe there's been also confusion or tension with siblings. Venus applying to Saturn in your third house suggests if you say what you mean and mean what you say in a really sincere way, but don't try to be uh, too harsh. <laughs> try to add a little bit of syrup to the message. So Venus is saying, Look, even if something's really been aggravating you and you're not happy and you feel that someone needs to listen to what you have to say, do try to find a way of expressing your idea as diplomatically as possible. It really will help. Now, the third house can be about everyday travel and therefore it could be about a car. If you've really fancied a new mode of transport, you may find yourself fantasizing about just the type of model that you would really like because Venus and Saturn could be a structure, but it's a structure, third house. Then again, you may be wanting to buy yourself a new piece of tech kit that maybe is a little bit uh, more dazzling and high higher spec than you have at the moment. So that could be an aspiration as well. Aquarius, since March 2023, Saturn has been squeezing the everyday financial sector of Aquarians. Now, of course, Saturn is your co-ruler. On this event, uh, the midpoint is in the fifth house of your situation, which is very much to do with speculation. But because Venus and Saturn are squaring it, it's not the best time to have a punt on something that maybe you're not sure about, you don't have the full information. You know that people are always talking about side hustles these days and get rich quick schemes they used to be called. This is not a time to look at those to be honest, nor is it a time to make any kind of grand gesture in order to try to flatter or impress anyone that you fancy. 
This is the time to be true to yourself. It may not be when you're absolutely at your most charismatic, but I can assure you by the 5th of April, you're going to be absolutely on top form. Yes, and that includes with Mercury's retrograde. So if at the moment you are seeming to be caught up in trying to balance the books, find economies, do things in a thriftier, shrewder way, and that is making it a little bit more difficult to splash out in the way you would like, perhaps on the type of fashion you would like, or going out for a meal, that could feel a little bit tense. But also, it's a good time to really think about what's solid around relationships. And if you are going through a little bit of a tough time in terms of financial headwinds, and you get through this with a partner, the chances are you're going to be shoulder to shoulder together, and that's a very good thing. But if there is someone who has very different values to you that you're seeing at the moment, however much you may fancy them, those differences in core values may become starkly clear at this time. Pisces, Venus applying to Saturn in your own sign could see you thinking a lot about your personal presentation. And Saturn may have tested you a little bit over the last year. You know, have you sort of been more self-critical? Have you felt that your physical vitality has been lower? Have you felt a bit more flexible than usual? Have things felt stilted and maybe even sort of a bit run down? Venus applying to, to Saturn is pushing you to recognise the things that are wonderful in terms of your personal appearance or your personality, the way you connect to others. But it's also saying to you that if you do want to um, connect with someone, it's important to be totally authentically yourself. It's not about necessarily being what you think they want you to be. Stick with who you are. Yes, you may miss out on one, two, three situations, but that leaves you free to connect with someone who gets that you would be a true heart. So this is a time to be very, very genuine in terms of what you want as an individual. Believe in your personal presentation. If you want to give yourself some kind of makeover, it could be a good time to do it, but certainly don't judge yourself as a glass half empty. See that this is a time of change. In fact, by the end of this week, you're going to be in such brilliant form as your uh, ruler Jupiter is met by Venus in a fantastic sextile. So even if things feel a bit tense at the heart of this week, once Mars enters on the 23rd, the sign of Pisces, some of the turbulent energies which have presented themselves over the last six weeks will make way. You're going to be feeling so much more yourself and alluring by the end of this week. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for joining me for this Heads Up video. If you'd like to order your Life Roadmap Report based on your time, date and place of birth, which will give you searing insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far, and also my special package of 30% off, get your 12-month transits report of the moving planets in the sky interacting with your natal chart. If you've already had that, you can get your draconic chart, your soul chart, very much to do with a karmic perspective, and that too is a character analysis and a 12-month forecast. Both have 30% off if you buy them together. Please see the link beneath this video for more.